What's going on guys? TG or Thunder God here. Today I got Virtue with me. Say what's up. Hey, how's it going? It's uh, Virtue. We're back at it. Yes, yes. And today we're talking about Hiruzen because, you know, we think he's pretty cool. I haven't had the opportunity to, you know, talk about him really well. It's been a couple videos. Virtue has a solo video on him if you're interested. Go check that out. Mm -hmm. We're going to be putting him up in the Akatsuki gauntlet and seeing how he does. I, I Y'all love these videos, so I'm going to just keep pouring them out. Um, all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, starting off in normal fashion, we're just going to be talking about Hiruzen, like where we think he scales. Now, for the sake of discussion, we're actually going to be using the Hiruzen that's like 10 years younger that Orochimaru was talking about in their fight and like how that would have like changed the outcome of that fight completely. The reason we're doing this is because otherwise we got to talk about like Hiruzen's shit stamina for the whole video and talk about it 40 times. And no one wants to hear that, to be honest, like at all, like uh, virtue. Does anybody want to hear that? Nah, listen, we're not trying to say, well, Hiruzen is way stronger than Hidan, but Hidan can probably just tank everything until Hiruzen dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're not, we're, I, it's not a fun discussion, nor is it accurate to, or respectful to Hiruzen. So, we'll just be doing that. Um, and starting off with Hiruzen, you know, there's a lot of, like, arguments people have heard. I think one of the stronger things for Hiruzen is just scaling him relative to or just above the Sani generally, maybe even in their base forms. What do you think about this, bro? Yeah, so I think you have like the Sani, and I think the Sani is a really hard, it's not, it's more ambiguous as a tier than what most people tend to think it is. Yeah. So I think there is like a ranking between them, and I think Jiraiya and Tsunade are pretty debatable, but I think Orochimaru is generally considered to be the strongest in the top of this tier. Agreed. And which, since Hiruzen actually does know a 10-year difference would just lead to such a greater level and power that he would kill Orochimaru. And, Oro or no, it's actually Orochimaru that concedes that. So he actually believes that if Hiruzen was 10 years younger, he would have just killed him. So the one we're going to be using here is kind of above that Hiruzen, who was able to, uh, you know, keep pace with Orochimaru quite well, one-on-one. -on -one. He was able to beat up, uh, you know, the two Edo uh, Kage. Even yeah. whilst he got, like, blinded. I think this one should just be kind of above that Sonic tier. And yeah. at worst, you say he's just on the really high end of the Sonic tier, maybe just slightly above Orochimaru, still in their tier. But personally, I kind of think he's more on the level now of those Sonic surpassing forms that's such like Sage Jiraiya and Hydra Orochimaru. Because those are kind of what's implied to be not the Sonic, but now it's like Jiraiya is not, he's like, I'm not a Sonic, I'm the Hermit Sage of Mount Miyaboku. Yeah. So I think they're more close, I think Hiruzen's a lot closer to that tier, I guess. And obviously, you know, there's mental afflictions that go into him and Oro's fight, but we've, we've like talked about these before in other videos on our respective channels. So, it, you know, a lot of people are aware of them. While we can uh, agree it kind of muddies the waters a bit, uh, you know, using this more pri uh, prime peers and does give us the opportunity to just say, Oh, that really doesn't matter or that just wouldn't apply so we don't really have to go into oh is, is heroes in holding back like why is he mentally afflicted mm -hmm. at fight, uh, fighting his former student then we have orochimaru who also has afflictions we don't need to go into that um and we were discussing how this slightly more prime heroes in would probably be w more indicative of his edo tensei counterpart the one who was making these like shadow clones using these large-scale jutsus all that crazy stuff, that's probably more indicative because that's not who he, and, and again, you can maybe imply he'd even do better, but that's just a very safe benchmark because he wouldn't just be suffering these stamina drawbacks and stuff like that. Um, and we can also talk about how Heroism might even be approaching like that Toby Rama level or just be comparative, uh, comparable in some degrees. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. So I think Edo Heroism, and I mean, let's be honest, he gets... He gets like cut in half by Jubito and then you don't see him for another like 30 chapters. So he's not yeah. like the other Kage where he doesn't get to just constantly display his power. But his two showings is one against the Guru Guru statue that was able to hold off the five Kage. And there are some translations that state that like if Hiruzen goes down, everyone else is so fatigued that this won't happen. They're not going to be able to win this. Exactly. So that could imply the one that was beating the Kage was you know, fighting a very fatigued Kage, but still, I, I think it's much more viable to say he's just above the five Kage from this because they're they're able to, you know, not really match him, but Hiruzen's able to do that with clones. And yeah. this is splitting his chakra up, and you saw Wei as an old man. This was, like, detrimental. It literally shortened his lifespan. So here, he's probably much closer to this area. And the other feat he has is reacting from, to a Jubito from a very far distance where he's actually able to move his upper body and Toby Rama has a very similar feat to this, except the only difference is there's no way to prove that he moved as much as Hiruzen did. 
So yeah. you kind of have these two levels here, but then you're like, okay, well, what makes the Toby Rama stuff more consistent? Well, you can go into the data book that states that heroes and surpassed him from childhood and talent, which basically just means like skill and adeptness, which is kind of consistent. So you could say that this heroes and could be like a rival to a Toby Rama and maybe Toby Rama slightly above, but I wouldn't certainly say that this Nine Tails attack heroes and is just going to get fodderized by this Toby Rama. So, yeah. you know, that's kind of my take on heroes and as an endo. Yeah, yeah, and a couple supplementary points, because I, I agree with a lot of what you said, and I think you, you worded that very well. Um, even against, like, when they're fighting Giri Yurizetsu and the five Kage, um, May does note that they were, uh, they had just run out of chakra. So, like you said, like, you're kind of looking at five fatigued Kage who aren't really relevant to Guru Guru. And then heroes and shadow clones are doing better than any of them individually. So it would just be, it just seems more likely that like heroes and by himself, just pretty objectively is above any of them. You know, at, le at mm -hmm. least with the version we're using, that shouldn't be too questionable. Mm -hmm. um, and just like supplements with the Shikamaru statement. And I, I brought this up in my Oro video, but the thing that's interesting about the heroes and example is that Yes, you can argue like Obito's truth seeking sphere manipulation could be slower than his bodily movements, but what people don't bring up is that he's accelerating towards Hiruzen, and then like he adds the truth seeking sphere acceleration to that as well, and Hiruzen's able to mitigate that as well. So it's just like, you know, we, yeah. we don't want to like argue the feats. We're just mm -hmm. saying like he shouldn't be like astronomically weaker. He should be in a similar tier, similar conversation with this more prime version. I yeah. think that's both. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and to touch on that, you'll also notice that in those two feats, you'll notice against Toby Rama, Jubito kind of just runs through them. He doesn't do a flight motion. And then yeah. when he does have the TSOs active, most people don't notice this, but he has them on each of his hands in the same way he does the heroes. In. However, they're just kind of stagnant, maybe a few feet off his hand or something, and they're yeah. kind of like a weapon. But when he goes against heroes and he's actually in like a flight motion going at full speed with the TSO also extending yeah. past him yeah. to cut through the shuriken and then to try to hit heroes in. and heroes is able to react to him and react to how he's cutting through the shuriken saying that it's much closer to Oniki's dust release. Mm -hmm. And then he's able to actually move out of the way that last second, which yeah. is quite notable as well, but not nah, keep going. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And again, you know, Tobirama also does place a mark on Obito. So it's like, these are debatable, but I'm just saying like, th they're showing like there is a bit of a comparison. Um, I'm not going to use the feat of like heroes and like outspeeding Tobirama to like save Naruto because I think that feat's very contentious because we don't know where Hiruzen was off panel. Yep. Uh, but again, yeah, it's just a lot of similarities you can draw um, off of that more prime Hiruzen. Something interesting to note too that we were looking at um, in the Orochimaru fight throughout part one, um, it's noted that Hiruzen has four wrinkles, but in the Nine Tails attack, he actually has two, which is, and again, that was like uh, from that point in the tuning exams, it was like, well, like 12, 13 years ago. It was like not, it was not yeah, that crazy. It was crazy. 13 yeah. at the time. Yeah. yeah, 13. So it's like, that's actually kind of like a substantial difference, like how much he aged, like and how, how gradual it was uh, and the effect it had on him. So this more prime version might even be stronger than what we're alluding to. Like it actually may just act, be that yep. much closer to like the mm -hmm. prime version that was like strongest Hokage. Not going to get into that because that's like, <laughs> the, you know what I mean? That's Some a whole back can of worms, you know what I'm saying? But again, this guy's consistently in the conversation. So this Edo Kyrison mm -hmm. should just be more indicative of like the more prime version we're talking yeah. about. And I mean, at best, you could say like, well, maybe this Hiruzen is still very relative to his old man self, but his old man self was just really nerfed against Oro. And I mean, if that's like, okay, sure, he's just super nerfed, not fighting in character, so what's he do? You know? Yeah. So then you're just like, okay, well, let's take this other version of him that's a little more consistent. That one thing that also is noted is everyone uses the Kabuto statement where Kabuto says that Oro, it was conscious of going in to fight the strongest of the five principal territories, or at least by reputation. But the yeah. thing is, Hiruzen hasn't fought since the Nine Tails attack. So the reputation would have been actually Nine Tails attack Hiruzen. But I, I do still think there's other medians supporting that very old heroes in being on that level. Yeah. Uh, such as the fan book saying that, like, Konoha is the top of all. So, I mean, it's still consistent, but at least in terms of Kabuto's statement, that's probably in reference to this, Arush. I mean, this heroes in. Exactly. And, and that's mm -hmm. us, like, being generous to, like, the five Kage. Because if we say old heroes yeah, in, like, real. it gets so much worse. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I agree. Um, And something else to know about heroes in is obviously Enma. You know, the strongest summon. Most people are aware of this, but... What people also don't know is that, like, if you look at a more prime Hiruzen, you're also using a more prime Enma. And the way Enma is consistently described in, like, the anime profiles, the data books, is that it's not, it's like more of like a partnership with Hiruzen. 
uh, where he fights alongside him as opposed to just like being this summon he stands on and is like, yeah, jump over there or something like Gamma Boots or something like that. Like uh, an example of this is like in the Oro fight, like you actually see uh, Enma actively engaging um, and even threatening to Orochimaru. So for example, like Orochimaru actually like feels the need to stop Enma uh, and his attack on him when he just goes to like bite him or like grab him. Uh, so again, like Enma is very threatening. He's very, he's actually able to stay relevant in these encounters. So I think yeah. that's that's also something that's telling. Like it's mm -hmm. almost like Hiruzen's entering a lot of these battles with a 2v1 uh, until Enma obviously goes into the Adamantine Yoi, and even then he can like stick his head out and stick his arm out. Yeah, and what, what you mentioned was like, uh, Hiruzen has Enma just kind of fly at Orochimaru, like as in, a, in a staff form, and Oro, he gets up the Kusanagi Blade, blocks it, but then Enma sticks his head out of the staff and starts screaming, and you can actually see motion lines for him to move towards Orochimaru, but then he actually just gets stopped and he's shocked and hears and gets scared and pulls him back. So he actually probably didn't want Enma to hurt him, which could imply that both Orochimaru, Enma, and Hiruzen all thought that Enma would be able to hurt this Orochimaru. The last thing I want to bring up is the Hiruzen knowing all existing Jutsu and Konoha statement. Um, I actually went ahead and got this translated, right? Because I had heard before that, like, oh, it's a mistrance. It's not a mistrance. So I got to the bottom of it. I want the truth. You know, we share the truth out here. Of Justice for the people. Uh, and the statement reads as following. Um... In Ko um, you, ca you are called the professor because you manage the knowledge of all Jutsu that exist in Konoha. And when we're looking at the translations, um, it seems much closer to that Hiruzen studied or is just knows about all the Jutsu in Konoha uh, as opposed to just being able to perform them, which is still um, contingent with his like narrative as the professor who like knows all these crazy Jutsu. I mean, Ibisu does note that he knows a thousand Jutsu. Um, or illusionary techniques the anime calls them jutsu so you could actually just say like he, he like him like studying all these jutsu added to his absolutely insane arsenal but in terms of just using this statement as object fact that he can like do shadow possession or all this stuff um it just doesn't seem as likely it just seems more consistent that he has as well of knowledge that allows him to just deal with all these jutsu because now he has knowledge of them so it's still applicable to battle so it doesn't like debunk the statement it just changes the context you know what i'm saying it just makes it a different type of uh buff for here's it do you want to add to that or you, what do you think Nah, I mean, maybe you could just say that, like, he doesn't know the functionality, but I'd still say that, like, something like the anti sharingan techniques, we know he is in so adept that he could fight yeah. with, like, his nose, right? So maybe he would be able to replicate something similar now that he knows a technique of similar level is out there. So, yeah. I, you know, yeah, but nah. I agree, I agree. Um, yeah, but that, we've been going on for a minute, my bad, we had to talk about here, there's a lot to cover, we just want to spit for a second. Um, we can get on to the matchups now. Now, starting off, uh, we have Hidan. I mean, look, 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 look. There's a couple ways you can look at this. I mean, there is a lot to here, actually. Uh, one of the things is, like, we discussed, like, Hiruzen should be above at least the base Sonic tier, uh, which is also should be above Kakashi and Asuma. Uh, Kakashi does think, like, Jiraiya is just above him off the lore of Fighting Pain. Uh, but this is also consistent with Part 1 stuff. You know, if you want to argue Kakashi got stronger, of course, and he does. That's also fair. So... It, it, again, peak Sanin should be above Kakashi at this point, which is also kind of confidently above Hidan as Kakashi's more confidently uh, tangling with Kakuzu. Now, the interesting thing is like there's a couple things to note for Hidan. Um, one is like we were talking about his slowest and weakest of the Akatsuki, or worst aim in the Akatsuki. Uh, we are discussing how this might just be him like joshing around and not being him entirely truthful. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so I mean, the statement still can be true. Like, I don't think it's just yeah. wrong, but I think people give it way too much credence as it should get. Because during that whole scene, Hidan and Kakuzu are lying. They they literally are lying the entire scene because the goal is Yugito's running from them and they need to capture her. So they're gonna try to lure her out. So then Kakuzu's like, Nah, I'm, I'm gonna let you take this one. He's like, but no, my I'm the slowest and my aim's the worst in the Akatsuki. He's like, you're usually the one that does this. And then Cox is like, well, I guess you better be careful. You're gonna die. And he's like, ha ha ha. And then Yukito just turns around and tries to fight him. Like, and it literally works. And then yeah. literally once she uses the fireball, he's behind a rock. And he's like, ah, uh, like a trapped mouse. And he starts joking, you know, because she's a cat, right? And he's talking about how he's been making all these, like, wrong claims. So I think that statement in particular, while it can be true, is just, I wouldn't use that statement to just demonstrably say, yep, he is the slowest in the Akatsuki. 
I will say though, that's just kind of my interpretation on that statement. But yeah, no, nah, I think their interactions much more, uh, much more contentious. Do you want to talk about that? Or do you want me to? No, I, I mean, I, I'll say this. Um, I think it definitely is more contentious, especially when you get into the durability aspect of Hidan, since we actually do see that he can like just survive the wind heart with no damage, which is kind of the point of Kakazu and Hidan's combos. They're meant to hit Hidan and hit the other person, uh, and vice versa. Because he dodges immortal, obviously. So that could be something. And we were talking about this. The the wind heart should be comparable in jutsu potency or AP to the other hearts, since they do combo attacks. And you have to you do if, if you're aware, like you have to have matching chakra ratios to actually perform uh, combo attacks. If one of the jutsu is just objectively stronger than the other. And the jutsu will like fizzle out and there will be like this burst effect and yamato tells naruto this he's like your sasuke's fire style is just a bad matchup for win all this stuff so they do kind of have to be similar which if you do imply that you may be able to say like oh would he don just be able to bake bolo through heroes and jutsu and stuff like that which we don't think is likely do you want to talk about this it's kind of interesting yeah so i mean listen at best you say okay well all the attacks are somewhat relative in ap and speed because they're able to combo so then he's relative to the two Raikiri that canceled out uh, False Darkness. Because Hiruzen's like Flame Bomb, for example, is stated to actually be the strongest fire style, which is yeah. pretty insane. Because if you actually notice, this would put his fire style to be above Itachi's, who's equal to like uh, Sasuke, or it could even just put it, uh, you know, maybe even just above that Sasuke objectively. You take this more of an, an, an like an objective median standpoint, right? But yeah. still, it's above that Sasuke, who's just implied by Naruto to be above Kakuzu. And Kakuzu's obviously implied just to be the stronger of this duo. So I think that this this jutsu should just be able to just sear Hidan. And, and there's no showings to prove that he can tank this attack. He has nothing yeah. on that level because, again, this is above Kakuzu. Because Naruto's like, nah, this, this Sasuke's still on a whole different level. And that's pre Orochimaru absorption. You know, this is him. In, he's thinking about him in his three Tomoe state. You know, so yeah. I think... And, like, the one that fights Itachi is much more prepped as well. So, I think this Sasuke is is just ob objectively above the Hidan level, which here isn't just scaling above. So, I think this yeah. Flame Bomb is just literally going to overpower Hidan to the point where it might put him down. Um, you know, maybe it, it won't completely kill him, but I still think him having Enma there is still something he could do. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, well, one thing I want to add to the Flame Bomb um, as well is that uh, for anybody who says, like, oh, you're, you're like, gassing it up, uh, the data book literally mentions it that even among the Jutsu mastered by the third, this one has outstandingly great power. So it's, it's just there's a good line of consistency for the Dragon Flame Bomb that, um, and again, the Sarutobi clan, their specialty is fire style. Like, this is all not new information. So it makes con complete sense why this would be, like, one of the stronger hitting Jutsu in his arsenal. Like, just to, ju just to completely bounce off that. Um, and the thing about Enma, too, is that Enma can like, just fight on his own or with Hiruzen. So in terms of, like, close quarters, A, it doesn't seem likely that he dons Scythe is really going to be able to hurt um, Enma, like the Kusanagi Blade. Um, maybe, like, you could argue, like, they might be comparable, but it just seems, like, more consistent that the Kusanagi Blade would have a sharper end to it. Uh, you, I don't know how you would prove Hidan Scythe is on that level either, since, like, Basic Shuriken can, it's like... It's improvable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kakashi can, like, s like, clash with it with a Basic Shuriken, so it shouldn't be on that level. Um, so Hidan, um, so Enma really shouldn't have any issues there. And then we also know, like, he, uh, listen... If Hiruzen, maybe you argue mental amp if you're under that interpretation, um, can disarm Oro like that, I'm going to be honest. Hidan is getting like mogged on in a close quarters encounter. It's just he's going to get disarmed. Um, the best thing we were talking about is you argue if Hiruzen does decide to summon Enma, he just like bites his thumb and that's the free available blood for Hidan. But that's like such a whack win con that like it doesn't even really <laughs> seem fair to Hiruzen. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. That, that's pretty disingenuous to say, well... He's gonna, you know, bite his thumb, get the blood, and Hidan's already won. And yeah. to be honest, that's probably just not gonna happen. Because another thing is, once he does summon Enma, Enma's, again, more like a partner to Hiruzen. And he's very implied to be on par with Hiruzen. And yeah. again, he's able to, to pose a threat to Orochimaru. Even Hiruzen thinks that. And Hiruzen's relative to that Orochimaru. So they should be relative combatants. So that kind of puts two people of a similar level to fight Hidan. In which... Enma still being a summon would do this, you know what I mean? He would do this in character to try to go uh, at least just maul, uh, maul Hidan, maybe rip his arms off or something like that. Yeah. And just kind of end him like that. And I think that's probably the most likely way. Because again, also we know Enma is able to push the entire Ninetales out of the village. 
which is just in here's and still has to withstand this force by the way which is still a good beat but edma yeah. is kind of on that level and that's way above anything he don scythe has ever been provably shown to yeah. do yeah so to be honest as far as i'm concerned this staff just breaks the scythe like straight yeah up. yeah yeah and, and again even if you argue like anime only like with that fee um it, it doesn't change anything like it's still a good fee um and it's, you know you could argue the anime is like an extension and whatnot so you know shouldn't really be too much of an issue i 100 percent agree i'm surprised we're still on hidan in this video but hey bottom line if you think asuma who can like tango with hidan is on a more prime here is his level i mean by all means you won but hey, i think i think i don't think anybody thinks that so i think we can get into the kakuzu section now do you want to take the lead on this one so yeah listen when it comes to kakuzu right there's a lot to go over here, and I kind of hinted at this earlier, but Hiruzen kind of objectively scales above this aura. So yeah. I, I don't want to get into that again too much, but you either say this old man Hiruzen is able to keep up with aura, at least he's relative, maybe slightly above. But this one right here, being 10 years younger, Oro just believes is objectively above him and would kill him. So this one's above Oro, and this Oro is implied uh, at the end of the Kabuto fight with uh, Sasuke and Itachi, that pretty much the only reason why Sasuke ever beat Oro was because of his illness. And that's kind of consistent is because heavy Sasuke goes to off guard Oro and just sticks the, the lightning cord straight through the door and Oro reacts to him. And he also reacts to him still even closer in, in like uh, close quarters. And this is like an Oro that his body is being, you know, is rejecting him and stuff. He's sick here. Yeah. So this is a pretty messed up Oros. And I think that's very consistent with him being above this heavy Sasuke. And heavy Sasuke, by this point, is just objectively above Kakashi. Kakashi kind yeah. of thinks this as well. And even if you don't, Kakashi kind of implies that this Naruto is a rival to himself, especially after Ross and Shuriken training. And then this Naruto just doesn't believe he's even reached the level of the Sasuke that didn't even absorb Orochimaru yet. So, yeah. and he's thinking about like a three Tomoe, you know, Sasuke here, not some CM2 Sasuke. So, you know, I think yeah. Hiruzen's kind of objectively above this, this Kakuzu, you know what I mean? So, By scaling above Kakashi. No, go ahead. Something I want to bring up, because I 1000% agree too. Mm -hmm. When talking about like Naruto's perception on Sasuke, he doesn't know a lot about Sasuke's arsenal. He doesn't know about Sasuke's six months of training. He doesn't know that Sasuke has like perfect manipulation of the curse mark comparable to like Kimimaro or like on the same level. Um, he doesn't know Sasuke can like amp his jutsu by going into partial transformation. All these snake summons. He's working off such limited information and this Sasuke is still a tier for him. So it's like, yep. again, Naruto does not have a good idea of how strong Sasuke is completely, mm -hmm. nor is he ever thinking about Curse Mark Stage 2. It's just like you mentioned, Beishar and Gon Sasuke. Um, and something we were discussing too that we alluded to earlier with the Hidan um, batch up is that, because you know, we spent a bit of time on it. Uh, we were discussing like the, the AP of the Jutsu um, because in this type of matchup, you could actually see some cool stuff like, Oh, what if like Hiruzen goes like bar for bar with the hearts like in their Jutsu clashes? But we just established that Hiruzen should be at a higher level. And it's like, okay, five hearts or, or uh, Kagzu has four hearts. Hiruzen makes four shadow clones and just does like all the elements with himself. Like what, what, you know what I'm saying? It's just, he unironically mm -hmm. might just decimate each of the hearts, like and overpower them. Um, and even if you want to argue like they use a fused attack, Listen, man, I mean, if you want to be extra to Hiruzen, you may be even able to argue he could do that himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, realistically. So, yeah. Hiruzen would honestly dominate uh, Kakuzu in that type of Jutsu clash. Um, Diamond Morph, as always, is probably one of the bigger issues. Uh, but again, right, it doesn't really make too much of a difference because it's like, okay, A, Hiruzen's like very, um, it's stated like he's very good at close quarters in Tai Jutsu. So, it, again, he shouldn't be getting dominated in, at any front. Obviously, if he's comparable to Kakashi or Greater, again, should be doing well. Again, we know Kakuzu isn't, you know, mobile with Diamond Morph. So, it would just present all these issues. Um, and you kind of have to argue, like, okay, if Kakuzu Diamond Morphs, he's just going to, like, what, sit still as he and takes down the hearts. You know, it would be pretty, yeah. it would be pretty bad. The only thing you could really argue for Kakuzu is if he fuses with his hearts or takes on the Jiongu, like, the more offensive form, which you want to argue, like, there's a speed increase for it as well. Kakashi notes, like, he's pretty fast. Um, again... You know, th this could present problems since it's noted Kakuzu has, like, no blind spots. And we were talking about this. This is more than likely not that he just sees everywhere. But because he has, like, hearts behind him and, like, on his side. So, he's able to just, like, shoot attacks out. Making it so, like, no one's gonna go in those blind spots. As opposed to just, like, being able to see 360 or see through his hearts or something like that. So, again, like, you really have to ask yourself, like, 
What if Irizen just takes out all four hearts and they try sh like shooting Jutsu at him? Like he could really make a shadow clone for each heart and it really wouldn't be too much of a problem for him. And that's him. in character too. Like he does that like against Gear. Exactly, Gear exactly. Like it wouldn't be out of a pocket at all to say his shadow clones would just body uh, Kakuzu's hearts and stuff like that. So, and you know, we obviously saw of Gear Gear Zetsu like the same, it's not the same Buddha statue, uh, but you know, a replicant. But more of the story is like maybe the Jeongu provides some like, you know, uh, pressure to heroes in, but Kakuzu only goes into that form when his hearts start dropping. A lot of people know yeah. this, so really shouldn't be too much of an issue. Yeah, and Kakuzu's biggest advantage is always his numbers game, and heroes and yeah. just counters that with these clones, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah agreed. Yeah, I think that's a good one on Kakuzu. So Hiruzen should be taking it on Kakuzu and Hidan. Uh, next up, we have here uh, Datara. Now, Datara is interesting because we kind of established... Uh, me, me and Virtua are under the uh, opinion that full power Oro is above Hebi Sasuke. At least I am. Um, I think uh, it's a fair take to say Hebi Sasuke um, is above Sick Orochimaru. Granted, we saw Sick Orochimaru can actually isn't just garbage in front of Hebi Sasuke. I still think that's a fair take. You know what I mean? I don't think that's insane. Uh, but full power should still be above that. Sasuke attributes his victory to Oro because of this. Um, we have Again, we saw the sick Oro stuff. Now, there's a couple different things to look at with, like, Hiruzen in this fight. Before we get into the matchup itself, I actually just want to talk about uh, some of the narratives between, like, Sasuke and Datara in their fight. Um, there, there's a When you look in, like, the data books and, like, how the fight progresses... Um, it, it discusses how Sasuke is a long range fighter and a close distance fighter and how he was able to overcome like this quote unquote like bad matchup due to the use of his Sharingan and if you actually look at the fight the Sharingan is what is enabling him to like close in on data as like high velocity explosives Virtue's going to talk about that in a second um, and actually cut that range and even though he does have a good like elemental matchup by all accounts the minute data got away from him he was in a horrible position right so it's actually implied that the reason he was able to overcome this bad matchup or this long distance matchup is due to his mastery of the Sharingan. And we were, we were discussing this, how, you know, Deidara is somebody who thinks he's a rival to Itachi and Sasuke kind of has to prove himself against Deidara with his own mastery of the Sharingan, just like Itachi did against Deidara, two Sharingan users who mastered it are beating Deidara. There's a pretty good narrative there and this follows like a lot of statements with Sasuke as well. Do you want to touch up on that? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like how the data books imply that Sasuke is a master of this Sharingan, hence why he's able to break Tsukiyomi. And regardless of your interpretation on him actually breaking the Tsukiyomi, it's kind of whatever. You just gotta take the data books and believe he's like mastering this, and that's kind of yeah. consistent with this narrative as well. Now, one thing to know about Daedara is again that narrative, and it kind of implies that the Uchiha is what's able to overwhelm this, this power, and it's just so overwhelming, which just kind of implies that Sasuke was actually so much above Daedara that even though he's at a uh, like a fighting distance uh, disadvantage, he was able to overcome that with his masterful use of the Sharingan, something that Itachi didn't have to do. And then later, right after this fight, he goes after Itachi, which is pretty interesting as well, and it's kind of a good narrative. But this is consistent as well, and a lot of people think that Daedara versus Sasuke is a super extreme diff fight, and while that may be true, it's not because of Daedara's combat or reaction speed or anything like that. It's actually his bomb's explosive velocities. And what do I mean? Well, Daedara, whenever he actually first encounters Sasuke, Sasuke is a very far distance from him, in which he charges body flickers over towards him, and yeah. then halts his movement speed whenever he cuts through Toby, and mm -hmm. then once he starts to slow down, Daedara's like, oh my god, he's fast, and he jumps back onto a tree. And then, Sasuke's kind of like, well, what happened with Toby? And he kind of ignores it, and he looks back up at Daedara, charges at him there, and during that whole distance, this is like a solid, you know, off, you know, eyeball, and it's like 10 feet, right? And then he goes up to him, and the only thing Daedara can do is just mentally react via popping the bomb out through his hand, and he literally just explodes it in front of his own face, and he literally states that, I barely managed to escape hidden in the bomb blast. And then he flies over farther to get an even farther distance from Sasuke, to which Sasuke then gets so close that Data is like, N okay, nah, I'm not contesting this anymore. I need to get out of his 5 meter attack range. Because he talks about like the Chidori and stuff and why it's just way too lethal. Because of this speed advantage that Sasuke has, and because of how much greater he is physically, Data's like, okay, I cannot I can no longer contend this. I need to just drop bombs on him. Yeah. So then he tells Toby to go down, lay the bombs. He starts dropping on the C2, uh, tracking dragons, 
and these are the ones that start to catch him off guard. These are the ones that start yeah. to actually hurt Sasuke. If you look at every feat that Sasuke gets tagged from, it's from a bomb's explosion velocity. And there's no way to actually prove these explosion, these explosive velocities scale back to Daedra's actual combat speed, reaction speed. As we know, that's just demonstrably false as we see what happens when they fought in combat compared to what happens when the bombs interacted with Sasuke. Yeah, I 100% agree. And again, it's consistent. Data is a long range fighter. It makes complete sense why his explosives are faster. Um, and, and, you know, because we, we're under uh, similar interpretations with the Data fight. Like, yes, it's a high diff fight, but um, Data's advantages do come from, like, the fact that he actually does have, like, a good matchup here, despite Sasuke having rights on to disarm his bombs. Um, something interesting as well is that third data book also notes that the power of the Uchiha is overwhelming, and the only way to defeat them is by self detonation, which. Is pretty crazy because it's basically saying that through these like Uchiha mastering the Sharingan, the only way Daedara could ever have beaten Sasuke or Itachi is just by blowing himself up. And you know, in the chapter statement for the fight itself, also remarks that due to the Sharingan, Daedara like it, it's it's considered a defeat for Daedara. So again, it goes back to the narrative we were painting with like the Sharingan being the reason Daedara lost. Um, this got turning into data of fight analysis. Wow. Uh, but <laughs> point is, point is, um, what does what does all this mean? Uh, it's basically us just saying like Sasuke should be above data or at a similar tier. But what we wanted to like get, dial in on exactly why that's the case, as opposed to just making a blanket statement like that, because a lot of people just make a lot of generalizations. Um, so we obviously have Hirzen. He's gonna be doing very well. And something we were bringing up, um. Enma's extension in this fight is just going to be so useful because it's just essentially going to make it so Dator is not really going to have a good opportunity to get off the ground. And again, the reason we we're bringing up this stat thing is because Hiruzen is a close quarters fighter. So if he gets close, it's going to be pretty disastrous for Daedara in this type of situation. So the fighting style actually does present a big issue. And if Daedara does try to get away, he's not obviously going to have bombs placed underground for him. So he can just summon a C2 dragon. Um, it's going to be pretty disastrous. And although we haven't seen the upper limits of how far Enma can extend, if you use that Ninetales example from the anime as like a benchmark, that's pretty ridiculous. And that, that just far exceeds Sasuke's Shidori range. <laughs> Which would just also just mean like he could probably just cut through a C2 dragon wing and just do something similar. So it just seems like due to all this, like Hiruzen should be able to rush down Daedara. Um, granted, Daedara could provide some trouble if he did get that distance. But again, right, like, A, you know, I don't think it's as likely to say Hiruzen would disarm the bombs. Since he's not going to be able to see like the chakra color or notice like maybe um, Daedara's like hand signs from far away. Um, he probably recognized it's Doton, but still... Uh, but I will say, like, I don't even necessarily think the fight would get to that point, or the bombs would necessarily yeah. make an appearance. No, yeah, now, to touch on that, this is all presupposing that he doesn't just blitz him off start, because another thing that happens with Daedara in character is Daedara actually sizes all of his opponents up. Like, yeah. straight up. He starts off with C1, he tests how they react to C1, and then he goes to C2, tests how they react to those, yeah, and then tests how... If he's going to have to go to C3 and then potentially even bring out C4. And then, again, if it's someone who's on the tier of Heavy Sasuke, which, you know, here isn't above, yeah. he's going to have to go to C0 and self-detonate. So this is kind of presupposing that he's not going to do that and he's going to go straight to C2 and fly in the air, which probably isn't even likely. And Hiruzen could just blitz him off start. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It seems very likely that Hiruzen just comes out really confident here um, and just does very well. Next up, we have Sasori. Now... I'm not gonna lie, right? Like, if you go with, like, a higher interpretation of Sasori and you look at, like, scaling him off the Kazekage, um, I think this doesn't matter in front of Hiruzen because whether you argue Rasa or the third Kazekage, Hiruzen should just pretty much scale above both of them with, like, no real contention. Um, the only way you could argue otherwise is the third Kazekage strongest shinobi statement. And in our opinion, this is in reference to the strongest shinobi in the sand, which is consistent with the third Kazekage's narrative of the third uh, as the strongest Kazekage. Otherwise, due to the time frame and how Sasori was like fighting around the Second Great War and when he left the village and all that, you would be arguing that the third Kazekage is just above like a much more prime Hiruzen and the likes of Minato, which is just like I, I don't know who's yeah. gonna argue that, but like. <laughs> Uh, we're not. We're not saying that. We're not saying Minato loses to Sasori. Yeah, and uh, to touch on that, yeah, like the statement for when he dies is like, no, he died over 10 years ago, and Minato would have died like 16 years ago uh, by that point. So you could argue that Hokage Minato was alive during the third Kazekage's like, reign, which is yeah. just erroneous to say that he'd be above Hokage Minato. 
or prime yeah. or prime favorite by the way and then that, that gets worse for Sasori if you go off like the third was a tough opponent which granted we don't see the like in the details of that encounter so if you don't like that statement i don't blame you uh but again if you apply like relativity it doesn't matter because he was just dunks on that tier anyway so and, and again here's an implies as much when uh Ruchimaru, like tells him that he killed rasa here's just like yeah my head's not gonna roll off as easily so <laughs> it's it's just consistent that like sasori's like rise to fame off of the kazekage and maybe chio doesn't really matter in the face of heroes and honestly like it doesn't really make too much of a difference uh and which kind of leads to this bad matchup where Sasori's probably not going to be able to tag Hiruzen with his Iron Sand and just get that instant kill off. Granted, if he does, uh, yeah, like so Hiruzen's not really going to be able to do anything about it. But also keep in mind, Chio's also like reacting to these attacks. and the, She's reacting to amplified speed attacks uh, from Sasori. So it's like, you're also just going to argue like, Okay, is old Chio gonna be above like a more prime heroes in? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't <laughs> seem likely. So, and we also did establish how potent heroes in Jutsu are. So it's not as if Saucer is just gonna be tanking these fireballs either, or anything like uh, the uh, the third Kazakage puppet. The best I could see is like Iron Sand used defensively, but realistically, like the scaling just puts him so much farther above anything Saucer could be that it's just kind of like a bad time you know what i'm saying he just pretty much has like all time it's like he could make like four shadow clones start jumping uh saucery with enma to the point where it's just going to be a bad time like saucery is another character just like daedra his partner likes to size people up in character and he likes yeah. to go from hiroko to then he'll go to third kaze kage so you know even let's say he goes to hiroko and here's and just brushes straight through that and then just like stab is right through him you know what i mean and that does lead into a little bit about the core but like firstly you can get to like the 100 puppets and let's say the 100 puppets came out right here's and splits himself into five clones and i'm gonna be honest i think one of here's and clones is gonna take out easily 20 puppets these puppets are just buns <laughs> you know what i'm it, saying it's, it's interesting what people with the 100 puppets right because you can't you can't say like sasori's like body is stronger than um the third kazakage when he talks about like oh i took down a country with this People also won't look at the statement in part one where Hiruzen's like, the Sanin are just as strong as like a small country as well. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't really matter like this, this, oh, I took down a country. It's like, okay, how strong was the country you took down? Yeah. And probably not that strong. You know what and I'm saying? it wasn't one so, of the five nations either. So that means it's some yeah. like Bun's country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if you apply just being directly com um, connected to Sasori's core or like, you know, direct nerd, like chakra network would make him faster because he doesn't have to use his hands to like maneuver the puppets, which was allowing Sakura to like precog and like kind of maneuver around like Sasori before she knew what the, the third uh, Kazakage was going to do. And, and again, it doesn't really make too much. It's like realistically, like Kirizen just makes five shadow clones, shoots five large scale elemental jutsu and it's over. You know what I mean? Like there's not too much to say. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. I think he just completely counters all of this. I'm also someone who's under the interpretation that Saucery probably didn't fight the third Kaze Kage, and if he did, there's no way to prove what they were relative in, because also a lot of people for some reason associate the poison with the third Kaze Kage, but no, that's actually Saucery's. So Great. as far as I'm concerned, he went to the third Kaze Kage's bedroom, put 100 puppets in there, and just managed to the poison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah, the third, the third literally could have been poisoned and then like messed up Saucer, you know what I'm saying? We just yeah. don't, we don't know how that went. Mm -hmm. um, and he could have started that fight off at an extreme disadvantage and then pressed Saucer as well. Like, yep. so because the whole tough opponent thing, like it is vague and granted you could use it to imply relativity. We just want to note, like you could also just like spin your own narrative with it as well. You know what I mean? Like, so here's it would dominate, you know, Sasori. And here's it just does kind of dominate this like mid Akatsuki tier. They're just not on this level. Um, and I think that's indicative of like also Rochimaru being like kind of this mid Akatsuki tier. It also yeah. just makes a lot of sense. And, and like one last thing to touch on next. I don't want to drag Sasori section that long because he sucks. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. But he, again, Hiruzen's above this heavy Sasuke. And who's above Aura, like a sick Aura, like a dip, like a in the bed, ready to die Aura, was able to react to this, like, uh, Sasuke, who's able to perception blitz this Sakura, who's able to actually react to Sasori's attacks and whatnot, and at least perceive his attacks, no matter what you want to say. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's kind of indicative. Um, next up, we have Kisame. Now, me, me and Virtue were, like, talking about Kisame and how he's very weird. Because I was, you know, we were discussing, like, I'm coming around on the Kisame wave. But we both generally agree that 
the B fight is really contentious for Kisame scaling. And in our opinion, it just seems better to scale him off of Guy. It's a lot more consistent with Kisame's strength levels. Um, you can just, like, there's a lot of, like, stuff you could draw out from the B fight. Do you want to lead on this? I know you have some opinions on this. And yeah. I can give my take. So, listen. I don't think... He, my problem is not whether Kisame scales to B. It's yeah. that the idea of the entire fight doesn't work on, like, three levels. So... Firstly, we know that B is like holding back with all of his like large scale main jutsu because he doesn't want to attract the Raikage, right? And it's still more or less just having fun with Kisame. And again, he also likes to test Kisame's reaction patterns. And so he starts to test them, gets them to a certain level. And then Kisame just gets blitzed by one of the, um, or kind of gets overwhelmed, I guess I should say, not blitzed, by one of the swords. And it does pierce him. Um, so... I will say that Kisame also right after that goes to test B, and B does way better against these reaction tests than Kisame does. So we know that B tests him to a level to where, okay, this level is what overwhelms him, and then still starts playing around with him more. So he kind of is testing him, he's like, okay, he's this level, this should be fun. And then Kisame ends up getting a jump on him with the bubble, and then he's like, oh god, what have I done? And then he kind of gets messed up because then, like, we notice, like, right after the reaction patterns, B then charges and blitzes Kisame with Kisame attempting to brace himself with his foot, yeah. planning to just absorb it. But then the absorption just isn't fast enough and he just gets slammed down. And that's pretty bad. So I will note. And even if you want to say that, let, let's, let's say like this, because I do still think that Kisame is relative to B. I do still think yeah. they're relative on a lower end. You know, maybe I don't think Kisame is above B, but I think they're relative. Yeah, I think, like, base to B, B1 is, like, the most yeah. consistent range, like, people put. Yeah. And I, I agree with that. You would never mm -hmm. be able to argue, like, V2. Like, that's just way too much. Yeah. And, like, the only thing that Kisame survived um, due to that was, like, Samaihata's, like, new, like, mm -hmm. like chakra absorption that can, like, has a range. And the fact that, like, not too many people know, like, Samaihata can just grab chakra yeah. even from a distance, which also aided um, Kisame because as he's mm -hmm. getting blown back... Because somehow that latched on to B's chakra, he's pulling the chakra with him. Yeah. So I definitely agree. Um, and continue. I just wanted to say, like, I think base no, to B1 yeah. is perfectly fine. I think that's nope. a good range. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think, like, yeah, even if you do say, okay, him and V2B, they're equals, right? Or him and just a normal base B are equals. B doesn't scale anywhere at all except just to an unquantifiable level below the Raikage at this point in the summit. Which, this point of the Raikage is after he loses his arm. So he's not as strong as the one that fought in the summit. And then yeah. the one in the war would be stronger due to fighting more and training more. So, again, where does this Raikage go? And I, I do still think this Raikage should be relative to his 5 Kage sum itself. But be still just under that. As we know that in the, um, the 4 data book for the Konoha 100 Leaf section, it does state the Raikage is always above everybody else in the village, which is pretty consistent. Yeah. And even if you want to say, well, B kind of surpassed him in the war, that is so out of context. And Raikage is kind of holding back in most of those instances. And he seems to get caught off guard by B because he's trying to, like, pace himself down the KCM 1's level. But, you know, that's a war arc B, and B's whole stick is he trains, right? So, you know, I, I think it's pretty disingenuous to say this Kisame skills really anywhere off of the B fight in particular. I do think the guy feet and the guy fight just in general is pretty well, but goes yeah. out pretty well. But, no, that's just my thoughts on the B fight. I agree, I agree. And, and the interesting thing here is, like, when you get into this matchup is, like, okay, because I do think people don't understand the fact that, like, B actually does, like, kind of change in strength and that he's not at this stagnant level, which adds to, like, it being a little difficult to just, like, stick Hisame at a certain point. Um, so you kind of have to ask yourself, like, does he kind of compare to, like, here is And obviously, we're not going to use the, the, the part one statement because I think that statement's absolute buns. Um, the whole, like, oh, we both would pale in comparison to Jiraiya. Um, although I do, I will say I personally think Kisame versus Asani is actually a good fight. I think you could definitely, like, that's probably one of the closer matchups in this series. Um, so I can definitely see something here, but something we were noting is that although, um, Kisame does have a pretty distinct elemental advantage against heroes in stronger jutsu, um, somehow out of notes that it actually just doesn't like fire, uh, like off of just getting, like, splitting Itachi's fireball, it just, it, it gets burned. He's like, I don't like that at all. So, you could actually say, like, he might not be as willing to try and go with, like, his chakra absorption on the fireball. Because Kisame uh, Samehata just kind of moves where it likes. That's why it just, like, switches up 
and it's not loyal to Kisame, it switches up to B. So you could actually argue like in that instance, it may not be cooperative with Kisame, but you can also have an interesting situation with like Enma and Samehada, where like, like these two entities that are also weapons that kind of interact. So you could actually see a situation where like Enma forcibly separates Kisame from Samehada, which kind of puts like heroes in like a 1v1 position as well. Yeah, I know. And, and yeah, I, I think Enma with, you know, kind of fighting a, like alone more of autonomously, is just way too dangerous for Kisame because then you're like, okay, Kisame versus Same Hada, you know, let's be honest, which one's winning that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Same Hada kind of flops on the ground and Enma is the king of all the monkeys, the strongest of all the animal summons, let's be honest here. He's pretty busted, but yeah. I will say that like Hiruzen's flame bomb scales above Itachi's and Same Hada doesn't really absorb that because he doesn't like it. So yeah. you could definitely say that Kisame is gonna kind of be planning to just have Samehada absorb it, but then just gets hit by it. So, yeah. you know, and we know like Shinobi amped their bodies with chakras, so maybe you'll say that like uh, Kisame wouldn't quite be on guard because he's not planning to tank it or nothing like that. So, you could definitely yeah. say that, but I will say when it comes to Enma acting autonomously and kind of pressuring Samehada while Hiruzen kind of fights and pressures more Kisame. That's also going to hurt a lot because, again, Samehada helps a lot with Kisame's reaction speeds and yeah. helps move a lot more for him. So whenever they're going to be kind of forced to fight on two different fronts, it's going to be pretty bad, I think. And I think Hiruzen should be able to overwhelm him. I will say one thing interesting is potentially, like, the elemental advantage with the water. You know, yeah. water on water on water is kind of interesting. So, you know, that's that's certainly something to maybe talk about. Maybe if Hiruzen gets in the bubble, it's kind of over. Maybe if they fuse, uh, which is probable that they could fuse. Um, how do you think this would go if they were to, you know, they're like, okay, this is too much to fight on these fronts, let's just fuse together, and they, and they go fuse and get in the bubble, what do you think? That could definitely present problems for Hiruzen, because as far as we know, like, he doesn't really have, like, good underwater feats, unless you look at, like, him versus Tobirama in the anime, where he gets, like, dragged underwater, and he's still able to kind of get under that type of situation, that could be something, but the fact that Kisame actually does, like, kind of get to those, like, v2 levels of absorption and cannot can just start like bodying b in the water i think does speak a lot about what he can do i um, mean he's again like he does push b to like the point of like just no chakra just completely fatigue and stuff like that so it probably would be pretty disastrous for heroes in, in the water bubble um one thing i could potentially see is like him extending um enma to like push himself out from like like he aims it down and like shoots himself out from the top or something funny like that like you could maybe argue like enma might actually be clutch in this scenario to like get him out of the water bubble mm -hmm. um otherwise you know it might just be a bad situation uh the main problem with like the samehada or the main problem with kisame fusing is that that is something a little later in the fight um and then it, he does like to wear his opponents down a little bit before he does do that so mm -hmm. it just see it seems a little less likely um but if you were gonna argue it you would definitely have to argue like he does like a super water shark bomb mm -hmm. to absorb some of uh, Hiruzen's like harder hitting jutsu. Um, so I could actually see a, a situation where if Kisame gets the appropriate momentum, because he's that type of fighter. Kisame's a momentum type of fighter. Yeah. He could actually co come away with some sort of W, but more likely than not, we do see kind of Hiruzen taking it just because mm -hmm. he can separate Samehada from uh, Kisame. He can kind of make it a 1v1 on two different fronts. Uh, it just seems pretty likely. And then you're going to kind of have, like, some issues with, like, Hisame versus Hiruzen. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And the problem is, like, even if you say that, like, if you see Hisame skills above this V2B, right? Where's this V2B skill? Just under the Raikage, who, skip, who Hiruzen's objectively above. Objectively. Yeah. But maybe even by quite a bit, you know, now that this is 10 years younger, and that's quite a part exactly. of it as well. So, you know, I, let's, let's be honest. If, if he's not underwater... I think uh, this hero should, should probably be able to beat up this Fusey Summit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Next up, we have Itachi. Now, this is very interesting. This is very interesting because it, 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 there has actually been some... Um, there, there, it, in the debate community or, like, Discord community, there's actually been a lot of debates on, like, strictly, like, part one Itachi versus old man heroes in, which is actually a very interesting topic in our opinion. We actually do think that's a very nuanced topic because... I actually do think like part one in Itachi and Hiruzen are contending for like the strongest characters in part one if you're using like part one knowledge only. So I think it actually yeah. is like an interesting discussion. Um, what's your thoughts on this? Like, what do you think about mm -hmm. like Itachi and Hiruzen in part one? How that might go and how it might change if Hiruzen's a little more prime. So, I mean, again, I'll say it like this, right? I've always leaned towards Itachi, right? 
But the Agreed. problem is you're like, okay, this Hiruzen is objectively above his old man self. So then you're like, okay, the best median to compare these fighters through is through Orochimaru. And Hiruzen as this old man is kind of able to keep pace with him. You know, he may be getting pressed in some areas, but regardless, in, in the Kenjutsu bout, he's able to pressure him. He's still able to catch him, even though both are nerfed, right? Whatever. But then Itachi, he's able to instantly Genjutsu GG him, but that's not shown yet. But all that is shown is just Orochimaru saying, nah, Itachi's even stronger than I am. And that's why he left the organization, referring to the Akatsuki, obviously. So we just have Itachi objectively above Orochimaru, and then we have, like, Hiruzen somewhat relative to Orochimaru. But now we have Orochimaru saying that he's like, nah, I'm gonna be honest, if you were 10 years younger, nah, you would've killed me for sure. Yeah. So... Is kind of contentious on where they are, like on speed and AP wise. Um, I will say though, something that's kind of interesting to note, and we were talking about this just prior, is in the 10 year anniversary guide, which isn't part one knowledge, but stick with me. Itachi is said to have the hottest of all fire style, but then for the um, uh, the fan book, or well, not the fan book, but what is, what is it, the uh, the anime profile guides, I believe, yeah, states that Hiruzen has the strongest fire style, so you have like uh, strong and potency versus heat. So, you know, it's kind of interesting, but I, w I would still lean to Hiruzen on that. But, you know, yeah. w w what else do you think could happen here? And you want to talk about maybe their abilities? Well, one thing before we get into that, I want to discuss with, like, Orochimaru and um, Itachi. And something I've never seen people bring up as well is because um, a lot of people just, you know, brush Orochimaru off. Because he does admit Itachi stronger than him, which he is convinced about. But something that's interesting is that when he uh, um, Itachi actually does put him under a Genjutsu, um, the one thing people don't cite is that... Orochimaru was actually preparing to break out of it. Like, you actually see his hands moving. And then uh, Mitachi just cuts off his hands to, like, prevent him from um, weaving signs. So, you, I actually do want to note that for people who do say, like, Itachi negged Orochimaru with, like, a 3 tomoe Genjutsu. Yes, it was effective. And, yes, it did open him up. But it's not like Oro just lost to the 3 tomoe Genjutsu and was like, oh, I'm dead on the ground. Nah, I was kind of like a supplement with that. So, you know, I think there is a couple cases to be made that, like, uh, there are some similarities here. But... As far as like like we like you described it pretty well, where both of these fighters are now kind of just like objectively above Oro, and it just leaves like okay, like what's happening now? Like how strong do you personally believe Itachi to be? Um, and something that's interesting about this discussion, like when you get into their abilities, is that Hiruzen should have a Sharingan get like countermeasures. We talked about this before, right? But. On top of having knowledge on the Sharingan and like probably most of the Jutsu used. And again, right? If you're not going to argue Chio doesn't have... Chio, li, Granny Chio, who is a Sand Village inhabitant, knows about the Sharingan and has fought it. So it's like, if she knows, Hiruzen knows. Um, something that's interesting, we actually see Hiruzen in Bringer of Darkness uh, when he's hit by it. Actually fight in complete darkness. Forget looking at your opponent's feet. He literally only sees black, and he's actually able to fight um, the Edo Tensei, Hashirama, and Tobirama, which you actually could attribute to him being able to just fight the Sharingan without looking in the eyes. Granted, you might be able to argue the Itachi Finger Genjutsu, but A, that's also why I alluded to the Genjutsu point before too, because Oro does get like kind of hit with like a stronger Genjutsu than Itachi's Finger Genjutsu. But on top of that, you could also argue just Enma funnels or agitates uh, Hiruzen's chakra as well. So there's a good uh, precedent to suggest that Hiruzen would not get just like one shot boloed Ungus Chungus by some of these Genjutsu techniques. Mm -hmm. Obviously Sukiyomi, but what we're arguing is that he wouldn't look in Itachi's eyes. That's what we're arguing here. Yeah, yeah. He ain't going to get put down by like demonic illusions shackling state. exactly yeah yeah and you're kind of more saying that like you know the oro that got put down by that was kind of a little off guard maybe a little too cocky and he was planning to break out of it yeah which means he was confident and maybe even itachi was also confident that he could and hence why he cuts his hands off yeah so you know i definitely think that's probable i will say though you know something like enma should be able to break him out of the demonic illusion but Maybe Sukiyomi is probably a big problem. Now, there's yeah. no way to prove that Itachi has the Yadami and whatnot now, but he does have Sukiyomi, and that's something pretty bad. Yeah. So, you could say that, like, Sukiyomi would just instantly put down Hiruzen. Agreed. And 
I'm gonna be honest, it probably would. It probably would put him down, or at least put him to an area where Itachi could capitalize, since, you know, we kind of have them being somewhat relative. You go part one on part one, and we're giving this advantage to heroes in the least. I agree. You know? and so, something uh, mm -hmm. I want to know is that, like, you know, Itachi actually, he doesn't fight the same. Itachi and Kakashi fight a lot similarly, which I don't see people brought up, but they both use, like, clone feints to, like, scope out their opponent's abilities, which heroes and also does. So this is actually, an, like, this, is, this whole battle is literally just... Itachi opening Hiruzen up for a uh, Tsukuyomi takedown. That's pretty much like the name of the game. If he can do that, that's his win con. Whereas Hiruzen, he has to go through all these loops. He has to take down Itachi's fire style. He has to like, you know, shoot all these jutsu. And he will be able to like just body Itachi's fire style with his own. And he would just like do well against the clones. But you have to ask yourself, like Itachi just still may be, you know, because there's so much speculation and because Itachi's win con is so much easier, it just seems easier to just say, oh, at some point during the fight, he can force that Tsukuyomi to happen at some point. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you argue like uh, Hiruzen does fight against the basic Genjutsu, which we agree with. We don't think he's getting ran, ran up on by like basic Sharingan Genjutsu. That seems crazy. But Tsukuyomi just is another question entirely. Like, it's going to hit yeah. way too hard for Enma to break him out. Um, even Enma in this situation could is also just like Genjutsu fodder because we know like Sasuke can put Manda under Genjutsu. You know, sage creatures are not immune to it. So at that point as well, you could even make some weird cases like, okay, he could mitigate the Enma advantage. You could even argue you could potentially control Enma and have him fight against Hiruzen. There's all these ways to argue it. So it's going to be a pretty difficult situation. Like this gets worse if you look at like how Enma pops his eye out of the Adamantine Yoi staff. And he's just like, what's up? So there is potential for this. There is potential for this. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably one of the more likely situations. What do you think about it? No, I, I definitely agree. Maybe you could say he pops the eye out and then Itachi is forced to use the Tsukuyomi on Enma. And yeah. then, you know, maybe drain his abilities out a little more because... Uh, even you could say he's lying, but he does kind of denote like against Jiraiya that he doesn't want to just drain himself exactly with the Mangekyo abilities by this point. So maybe he's not quite as adept with him if you do take that as you know truth. But you know maybe that's just yeah. something. Maybe if they had a fire clash, he would also be forced to have to use the Amaterasu to overpower it, similar to how he did with Sasuke. Yeah. But if he does do that, it's probably just gonna kill Hiruzen because that probably would just fall over onto Hiruzen, which is kind of a problem for him. So, I mean. Listen, I think at best you could say Hiruzen could reap a death seal Itachi, yeah. which is, is true. It could lead to, you know, potentially a, a tie, which is plausible. I actually think that's plausible, yeah, I agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it's more like Itachi has a lot of these advantages, so Hiruzen to be able to reap or death him is like maybe three or four out of ten times, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do want to note, like, Hiruzen should have the stamina reserves to actually just reap or death seal and win against Itachi. Um, if in his old age he's competing with Oro, um, granted, I don't think Itachi, I think people cap about Itachi's stamina reserves, but... I, I, I do think there actually is a good case to be made that Hiruzen would just lap that entirely. So if you're looking at that, he should just be able to win the clash if he gets it off. Where he gets it off is more questionable. Um, again, this is all predicated on these two being in a similar range. If you want to argue this slightly more prime Hiruzen is just like objectively above the Itachi tier and scales closer to like the strongest Hokage, by all means, you know, you do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you take, you get your bag. But we're kind of going at this a little different. But next up, we have Pain. Now, Pain's also just, like, kind of similar to Itachi. You know, top three among mm -hmm. the Akatsuki. Really strong. They're both really strong. What's your thoughts on Pain? So, my first thought when I think about this, this battle right here, I immediately go to the Jiraiya battle. Because you look at that fight, and at first, when you look back, you're like, okay, Jiraiya got stomped. But then you look a little more into it, and it's like, okay, Jirai was running the paths one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, like he's doing guys. his thing. He's doing his thing. Yeah. yeah. And the chapter synopsis statement does say that one-on-one, -on -one, he's on the road to victory. Mm -hmm. So that does kind of imply that one-on-one, -on -one, Jirai can't handle all these paths. But he does self-concede that three of these would be too much for him. So Hiruzen's kind of similar. He should be able to take all these paths out one-on-one. -on -one. And Jirai is actually stated to be potentially the strongest summoning team. And it does have a question mark, which may imply relativity to someone like Hiruzen and Enma, who comes just before this. So maybe don't take this as objective median, but maybe you could say that, like, at best, you know, maybe um, that this that Jirai is still above Hiruzen because Enma would be above, you know, Ma and Pa because he's the strongest of all of them, uh, those summons. So then the strongest summoning team would just mean that Jirai would also have to carry that 
that weight up, you know, back up to kind of keep them either relative or even above that level. Yeah. But I don't really think that's super true, and I think they're still relative because Hirzen is still on that above Sani level because, again, Jirai is like, okay, I'm no longer a Sani, and I'm now a Hermit Sage and Mount Miyaboku. And Hirzen's kind of also now on that level of those above Sani level threats. So I think him being this level isn't still out of the question. And I still think I still think he could handle one, maybe two pads at once, which could come pretty in handy. Now, something he could do that's in character is what if he were to split up five clones like we've alluded to quite a bit, such as how he does against Guru Guru, and then forces them to maybe go after, you know, the paths or whatnot. And what do you think would happen if he did put the clones out like that? Honestly, you could actually make a good case. He might just do very well against the Paths of Pain individually right. because we do know that the Paths aren't all the same strength. That should be pretty clear. You know, I cut the Naraka Path a little slack, but at the same time, you know, Konamu did hit it with a Rasengan, uh, as opposed to the Diva Path that's just like b solo bodying like Kakashi, no diff. Where's Naruto at? Leak the leak le leak the Doxin, bro. Dox Naruto's location. So. It, there's a bit of a difference, um, and you could definitely make a case Hiruzen would do well. Uh, maybe against the Prada path, that might be a little more difficult. Um, he might need to get a little closer. Again, yeah. Hiruzen's, Hiruzen's kind of an animal in that regard. Um, Diva path is definitely outside his realm. Um, the only way you could argue maybe is like Enma as well, but again, that might just, that's just a very difficult fight because um, Shinra Tensei just negs everything, like Ninjutsu and Taijutsu, yep. which just stated in the fourth data book. So it would just be a very tough situation for Hiruzen. Um, and you kind of have to argue like his shadow clones don't get taken out relatively quickly or that pain just like rushes him down and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's like, even though we know Hiruzen should be above this Sage Sani tier, is it to the same degree that pain is? You know what I'm saying? That's the question I think we should be yeah. asking ourselves where mm -hmm. I do think pain is a bit more confident in that regard. Um, but I think Hiruzen would do very well here um, in this fight. I mm -hmm. think he would actually do very well against the pass. I think you could actually make a case he might even do better than Jiraiya in some regards. And Jiraiya actually had two summons aiding him. So that might say something. But what, what do you think? No, I mean, I'll be honest. I I think, I don't, it's nothing to do with really power, but I think stylistically he does better against Pain than he does yeah. against Hachi. Because I think this is just a better fight for him. And one thing you could say about a lot of the of the Pain's abilities, except for like potentially um, like the Diva Path, that's the only one that kind of puts me in question. But here's with having all these knowledge of all these Jutes in the Leaf and just knowing how they exist and understanding functionality, he should know and be able to comprehend most of these abilities because a lot of people give like uh, credit to a lot of these analytical fighters, but they never credit Jiraiya, who low-key figures out Pain's abilities pretty quick, and he does yeah. very good at it. Yeah. And so I, I definitely think that Hiruzen could do something similar and figure out these abilities to kind of get something against this Pain, but then when it comes to Pain, he could just start bringing them down to just not having all six and say, even if it goes Tendo, what happens? Hears and gets stomped, you know, it's just like that. Because he's not able to be able to overwhelm someone like Pain if Pain's in Tendo. So it's yeah. almost like them being split up like that is an advantage for Hiruzen, which is kind of why it's so, like, stylistically good for him. I guess. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I like what you said about Jiraiya, because not a lot of people give Jiraiya credit in that fight. Like, for example, nobody brings up the fact that he pulls a path of Pain into, like, his Toad Barrier dimension that, like, when all six are jumping him and stuff like that. So it's like, he does do well. It just seems like all six would just be too much. Again, it, it, assuming that Hiruzen just doesn't scale to like the complete like strongest Hokage form here um he just does do a lot better against pain here even though so I think that is something I don't think Reaper Death Seal though um really offers too much here just because like you kind of have to argue it's affecting all the paths of pain or if it's just going to seal away the chakra that's located in that specific path you know what I'm saying like I don't I think you would be hard pressed to argue that it would just like reach all the way back to Nagato. So that's unless you want to make like a super sick win con and assume that Hiruzen can grab all six with six shadow clones and initiate the Reaper Dead Seal, which would be kind of sick to see. <laughs> uh, that would be kind of fire. I'm not going to lie. That would be kind of cool to see. Like how um, he did against the Edos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like <laughs> yeah. that, which would be kind of sick. But be pretty raw. more often than not, it, you kind of have to like argue that. And then you obviously get into like Pain's Arsenal, the Renegon Rods, how those would be pretty detrimental. How a lot of heroes in his Jutsu probably wouldn't really be able to breach some of Pain's defenses. Again, he does better versus like, he does, a, he does he's similar to Dry. He does very well against them when they're split apart. But when all six are here, it's kind of a bad matchup unless you want to argue yeah. like all of his shadow clones 
are above Sage Mojiraya, which mm -hmm. if you do, you know, this is actually like, again, a really good fight because most of the, like half, maybe, depends how you want to argue, but again, it seems pretty likely that Sage Mojiraya is just above, like, like he's able to do well against the Pats of Pain one-on-one, -on -one, you know what I'm saying? And then, like yeah. you mentioned, three-on-one -on -one is what overtakes him. Mm -hmm. And I, I was going to say, like, I think that Pain and Itachi are narratively implied because you get to this level, right, in the series, and it's like Naruto and Sasuke, they have these mentors. Their mentors are Sani, and these Sani actually get beaten by these new big bats, right? Yeah. For each of the characters, respectfully, being Pain and Itachi, putting them on a similar pedestal as well. So it kind of implies that they're just objectively above not just the Sonin, but above the Sonin's high forms. Yeah. Which kind of forces these our main characters to say, okay, we need to get a new a new level, uh, something higher than that. So I think that while they're both kind of on that, I think Hiruzen's on the level of those peak Sonin forms. I think Pain's just objectively above that. Agreed. Um, one thing you brought up that was kind of interesting is maybe how the Renegon rods could interact with Enma. Um, but to be honest, the Renegon rods are busted. Those things, yeah. they tank a lot of stuff. And it's like, okay, Sage Naruto can break them. But, like, that's Sage Naruto, you know what I mean? That's not that bad. That's yeah. pretty good, actually. So, I definitely think that still, regardless, I still, I, I still think Pain should win this, like, mid-diff. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And, and again, that's just, like, us... This is us talking about like the general tier where this like slightly you know the slightly prime more version should be at or or should scale to. So it would probably be a good fight, but I think he would do better against Pain than Itachi, just like you mentioned. Fundamentally, it's just like two completely different fights. You know what I'm saying? And then last up, we have Obito, and this is kind of like a wash. I mean, pretty simple stuff. You know, just runs up BFR. Nothing here is it has is really gonna prepare him for this. Um, Obito is just kind of at a pretty extreme tier. Um, should just be at those KCM2 levels as well, as that's like the lore behind it. Not going to get too much into that, but there really shouldn't be too much. And if you want to argue like the version of Hiruzen during the Ninetales attack, he's like looking for Minotaur. Like when the Ninetales is attacking, he's like, yo, where is Minotaur at? We need to stall the Ninetales until Minotaur gets here. You know what I'm saying? Like he's still mm -hmm. kind of implying that Minotaur would be above him in those forms or just does think Minotaur's strength is extremely worthwhile. So it's like, Imagine putting like this that same heroes in against Obito. It just wouldn't have been a good ver yeah. like a fight. And then you have like this arguably stronger version. It just would be pretty detrimental. Yeah, and that, that's consistent with the chapter th uh, 238 synopsis statement saying that Mianto does have unrivaled strength. Yes, yes. Which this is after going through all of Hiruzen's lore and him being, you know, the, str the strongest of all the Kage and whatnot. So I think that's pretty consistent. And... I personally believe that Obito is only relative to Mianto on a very low end. I think everything that happens is Mianto uh, holding back generally. But I think still, he's still able to keep up with this Mianto regardless of how you want to twist it. And is generally, I you know, you could kind of go either way say that Yellow Mask is above Orange Mask or Orange Mask is above Yellow Mask. Because there's arguments on both sides, right? Yellow Mask, you could say maybe had a little extra Zetsu and Hashirama cells, you know, going into the battle. You know, maybe he wasn't injured. Or maybe you could say that Orange Mask had another, you know, 15 years of experience and fighting does give you experience and he does the whole massacre and whatnot, which yeah. could allude to at least a similar tier, if not higher, which is consistent. Because even then, like, V2 Raikage poses zero threat to this Obito, which is consistent as well with, like, um, with him being on those, like, potential KCM2 levels as Mianto is, and that's the whole narrative. Um, as well, which like even then we have like Itachi and Hiruzen being somewhat pseudo rivals given being pretty generous to Hiruzen and then Obito is kind of just above him with only being slightly weary of Itachi, you know what I mean? So, yeah, 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 just seems pretty consistent, but I agree with everything you said um, That's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it's long as fuck But bottom line is like we actually think Hiruzen um, is definitely more comparable in a slightly more prime state uh, to the top three of the Akatsuki, like, generally speaking. He's just, like, kind of, like, in that same tier. Uh, and would do very well. Um, and is one of the few people who could do well against, like, you know, the likes of Pain and Itachi. Mm -hmm. Or could give them, like, a run for their money. Or just perform well against them. Yeah, yeah. And I also have a video out similarly to this, but with Orochimaru. And you guys can also see how that lines up as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, but that's the video. Go check out Virtue. I'll obviously link the Orochimaru video down below. Um, all that good stuff. Yeah, catch you next time. I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important.